Hey everybody, hope you're doing amazing. Um, I just want to say over a short Dvar Torah from Moshe Wilson Shlita. Uh, very inspiring. Some of you read, might, might have read it in a, in a Purim message that I wrote. We find in Mesechem Megillah, Yud Gimel Amad Beis, it says over there that God foresaw that, that Haman was going to weigh out uh, 10,000 talents of silver against the Jews, and God preceded our Shkalem to his Shkalem by commanding us in the midst of Shkalem, Parshas Kitisa. Comes along, toasts us on the spot. No, sorry, that's, that's, that's that Gemara. Tosos is not on that Gemara. Comes along another Gemara on Megillah Tetzayin and Mabez, 16b, and Haman Shkalem come up a second time over there. Says the Gemara, Haman came to get Mordechai uh, to parade him around, and, and uh, how does it go? And, and Mordechai was davening to God that you know, Haman shouldn't harm him, and while he's waiting, Haman asks one of Mordechai's students, what did you learn today? And the student says, according to the Gemara, um, today is the 16th of Nisan. In the days of the temple, on this day, we would have given a Korban Omer. The Korban Omer is a type of Korban Mencha. And in this context, Mordechai spoke about the laws of Menachot altogether, right? Meal offerings. And in this context, he taught us about a Minchas Ani, which is just a bowl of flour, um, from which uh, an Ani gives us a handful of flour, a comment of flour. Says Haman, your handful of flour overcame my 10,000 talents of silver. Now, the depth of Haman's words, why he felt that our comments of flour overcame his, you know, silver does not concern us at the moment. Okay, what concerns us is Tosos on the spot. It says Tosos, Shamati, I heard, that where did, where did Haman get this number 10,000 talents of silver from? Where did he get this number from? It says Tosos, Shamati, that if you take the machsas a shekel of 600,000 Jews, the left, right, Jewish men that left Mitzrayim, the machsas a shekel of 600,000 Jews adds up to Aseret Alafim Kikar Kesef. Okay, and that's where Haman got this number from. And we would like to add, oh, and Tosos ends off, Dok Vitishkach. If you examine carefully, uh, you'll see that the mathematics work out. Okay, as for Moshe Wolfs and Shlita, two bomb kashas, as you say. One, Tosos said, look carefully, and you'll see that it's true. Okay, the truth is, if you look carefully, it's actually not true. Okay, look in Parshas Pikude. Okay, it's explicit that the, the machsa shekel of 600,000 people added up not to 10,000 kikur kesef, but to 100. Okay, in the, in the Mishkan, under the, uh, the Krushim, the, the, the vertical boards, were Adanim, these two like silver blocks. Um, and in total, there were 100 Adanim. And so, so says the, the Pesukim over there, Parshish Pekudeh, that you have, you have 100 kikur kesef from the 600,000 Jews, and each kikur, one kikur went for one Eden, kikur le Eden, it says. Okay, explicit that the silver, the machsa shekel of, of 600,000 Jews adds up to 100 kikar. 100 is 100th of 10,000. It follows that Tosus' mathematics is off, off by a scale of 100. And they seemingly had the quote-unquote chutzpah to say, look carefully and you'll see that it's true. Look over when we look carefully, it's not true. Question number one. Question number two, you have two Gemaras that we just quoted regarding uh, Haman Shkala. You have the Gemara in uh, 13b. That, um, that our Shkalem are corresponding to his Shkalem. And you have the second Gemara, where the main topic of the Gemara is, is Haman asking this student what he learned. And the main answer of the student is that they learned about uh, right, the Minchas Omer and Menachos and Minchas Ani. Okay, that's the, the main answer. And Haman decides to throw in that, um, that, that our flower overcame his Shkalem. Okay, if you are Toslos and you want to talk about the mathematics of, our, the, of the correspondence of Haman Shkalem and Arshkalem, which Gemara would you put this on? The first Gemara. The topic of the first Gemara is the correspondence of Arshkalem and Hishkalem. Okay? So that's where Tosos should say, besides that we're asking that the mathematics don't work, but where should, have Tos, where should Tosos put his comment? On the first Gemara. Because that is the topic of the first Gemara, on your Gimel and base. In contrast, in the second Gemara, where Haman Shkalem come in tangent, totally tangentially, Right, Dafka there, Tosus puts this tradition that, uh, right, of, of, of how the mathematics of Arshkalm and Hishkalm correspond. Okay, what, what's going on over here? Okay, well, Wolfson answers these questions, Mamish, beautifully, and the, the practical uh, inspir- lesson and inspiration is tremendous. Notes of Wolfson, first of all, okay, bracha, the essence of bracha is multiplication. Okay, the first time the word ever appears in the Torah is, be fruitful and multiply. It's the first time the word appears, and that's the essence of bracha, to, right, to multiply. Now, the minimum multiplication is to double, okay? The minimum to, of something being multiplied in its totality, not partially, is to be doubled. And what Wolfson brings from the Maral of Prague, a very nice remez, you could talk about doubling something by single digits, double digits, or 
or, um, or three digits, okay? The, the number that represents doubling something by single digits is two. The number that represents doubling something by double digits is 20. You have 10 and you make it 20. And doubling something when you're doing with three digits is that 100 becomes 200. Okay, so 2, 20, and 100 rep each represent doubling. Okay, what letters represent 2, 20, and 100? Bez, Chaf, and Resh. And of course, those are the three letters that make up the word Barech, okay, to bless. And that highlights that the essence of blessing is multiplication. Now, notwithstanding that doubling is the, is the, is the, is the, is the basic aspect of Bracha, notes for Wolfson, the, uh, the full extent of Bracha is, is fulfilled specifically when something is multiplied by 100. And he brings a number of sources, but the clearest is at the end of Par sorry, in Parsha's told us. Okay, Parsha's told us, it says that Yitzchak planted a certain amount of, uh, you know, zera, and it says, Vayim se'eu me'asharam, that's where the words come from, me'asharam. He found a hundredfold more than he expected, Hashem, and, and that was a fulfillment of God blessing him. Okay, so we see from, right, so you see from there that the full fulfillment of blessing is when something's increased a hundredfold. And Rav Wilson adds that that itself is hinted to in the, in the Maharal's Remez, Bez, right, 2, 20, 100. You see that the word Baruch, right, stops there, okay, uh, with the Remez of doubling on, on those three scales. Because again, the full, the full blessing is when something's increased a hundredfold. He brings that from the, the Chassam Sofer. Now, Okay, so the full extent of uh, a blessing is when something's increased a hundredfold, but how does one get blessing, right? What can we do to induce bracha? Um, that is a pasuk in Mishle, tov ayin hu yavarach. Okay, when something is given with a good eye, when something is given with generosity, okay, that brings blessing to the thing that was given. Um, now, oh, Another, a, 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 a synonymous, I guess we could say, synonymous with the idea of tov ayin is the idea of nedivet lev. Okay, it's, it's really the same idea, just focusing on a different body part. When, when, um, when something is given with a good eye, when something is given with nedivet lev, with a voluntary heart, again, it's really the same idea. Back to the shkalim. Those machsa shekels that, that, that we gave, which are being mentioned over there in Parshas Pekudeh, they were given as donations to the Mishkan. It is explicit in Parshas Vayakal in the beginning. When we donated to the Mishkan, I believe five times, that the donations were all given benedivet lev. Okay, kol ashir nadav libo. Okay, and let's put it all together. Since everything that was given was given with a generous heart, with a, with a generous eye, Okay, tovai nu yevarach. When something's given with, with a generous heart and a generous eye, it gets blessed. And the full extent of blessing is, when, is that something shouldn't be increased a hundredfold. And that is Pshat and Tosos. Really, what we, right, really the Machs is a shekel of 600,000 Jews. Um, really, it does. It only adds up to 100 Kikur Kesef, like it says in Parshat Pekudeh. Okay, but what? Because it was given with a, with a good eye and a good heart and, and with generosity, we're happy to give it. Okay, Bracha kicked in. When Bracha kicked in, it conceptually increased it by 100 fold. It was as though it was worth 100 times more. When 100 Kikur become increased by 100 fold, it becomes 10,000 Kikur. And Tosos is right. When you examine carefully, you really see that the mathematics do work out. And that is Ramon Wolfson's beautiful shot in Tosos. Okay? That, that it was ki'ilu, it was as though it was 10,000 kikur kesef because we gave it, but it did live betov ayam. Now, you should know, there are many, many ask this question on Tosas' mathematics, there are many answers, but Rav Wolfson has a tremendous riot to his pshat. Okay, and that riot comes from the other question. Why did Tosas put their commentary on the second Gemara? Um, right, the, first, the, the topic of the Gemara in Yugimlom and Beis, the first Gemara, is the correspondence of Ashkalam and, 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 and Haman Shkalam. The second Gemara, it really comes in as a tangent. Why does Tosus put it on the second Gemara? The answer is, what's the topic of the second Gemara? A minchas ani. Okay, specifically, if you look in last week's parsha of uh, Vayikra, when it talks about a, a minchas ani, it says nefesh ki takrif. Nefesh ki takrif. And say chazal. Okay, when an ani brings that flower, it's ki ilu hikrif esnafsho. Okay, even though, uh, even though it's just a bowl of flour, okay, and it's worth nothing compared to a person who brings a korban of a, of a bird and a korban of an animal. Okay, but an animal for a rich person is actually easier than a bowl of flour to, to a person who's Rahman al Islam poverty stricken. Okay? And since that bowl of flour is very hard for that poor man, okay, when he brings it, it's Ki'ilu Hikrifas Nafsho. Okay, and that's what the Mishnah says in the last Mishnah at the very end of Menachos. Okay, it says Reich by an animal korban and also by a bird korban and also by right, a, a simple flower offering. Whether you give a lot, whether you give a little, okay, the main thing is that you're doing your best. 
Now, so it comes out the whole lesson of a minchas ani. The whole lesson of a minchas ani is that when you give something uh, amidst difficulty, it's worth so much more. Now, as we all know, we, right? We, we love our money. <laughs> we, are, our, our, it's not, we don't easily part with our money. If we're good about giving mice, we give mice or whatever. We don't easily part with our money. Okay, anyone that, that gives b'nadiv lev, anyone that gives b'tov ayin, perforce, there's, an, there's always going to be an element of Messiah Nefesh there. Okay, we're, we're, we're attached to our possessions, you know, it's normal. And it's, it's always going to be difficult to give something generously. Okay, and it follows that, um, and, that, that and, and, and whatever we said in, in the first part of our Torah is really what's being said over here by a minchas ani. Okay, when someone gives a min, when an ani gives a minchas ani, it's hard. Okay, it's hard, and therefore it's worth so much more. And that's exactly what we said. When someone gives generously, benedivet lev, betov ayin, it's worth much more. Now we know why Tosos put their commentary dafka on the second Gemara. Tosos knew that their mathematics is off by a scale of 100, and Tosos knew that the only thing that would make their mathematics make sense is this mechanism that when you give amidst difficulty, it becomes worth much more. Okay, that mechanism is the topic of the second Gemara. Okay, the, the whole Gemara is saying, right? An ani, an ani gives a bowl of flour, but it's worth so much more. It's worth as much as an animal korban because it was hard. Okay, ke'ilu hikav is nafsho. Okay, knowing that this their mathematics only work with this concept. And, th- and, and being that this concept is the topic of, this, of Dafka, the second Gemara, which talks about in Minchas Ani, that's why Tosos put their commentary on the second Gemara. And that is, uh, accordingly, a tremendous raya that revolves in Pshat is, is, Tosos, is Pshat and Tosos' is mathematics, even though they're all the Pshat. What is the inspiration that comes out of this? Okay, we all know how hard it is in, in modern times. Okay, whenever we think spiritually it can't get worse, you know, it really does. And um, it's, if, if we start comparing ourselves with the accomplishments of early generations and so on, it's so easy to lose our self-esteem and feel like my great-grandparents, you know, new shots backwards and forwards and so on, and, you know, I try and get out a few black Amara. It's so easy to feel, right, that our accomplishments are nothing. Okay, but we have to take very big chizik from these divrei Torah, from Sechus Megillah, from Revolson, okay, that since we are, right, we are going up against challenges, Okay, that when, when, I, when I was younger, I didn't even imagine these things, let alone previous generations, did not even imagine the challenges that this generation has to go, to go through. Okay, everyone has to know that every small bit that they're doing in this generation is being amplified at least a hundredfold, if not a zillion fold, okay, because it's so hard. Okay, and it's meaningless to lose our self-esteem relative, you know, when we start comparing ourselves to, um, to earlier generations and so on, because right, on some level we're equal, because whatever we're doing, we're going up against so much harder conditions. Okay, and, um, and this should be a big chizik for us that whatever we're doing is worth so much um, given the circumstances we're doing it. So that was the Dvar Torah. I just want to end off uh, by encouraging everyone who's able to go to the Shabbaton uh, to do so. I wish I could be there. I wasn't asked to go. So <laughs> no one asked me if I want to go even. But uh, anyway, but uh, if I could go, yeah, you know, um, I guess I would want to go. I don't know. I mean, I'd be, yeah, traveling's not so easy. But if I, one thing's for sure, if I would be able to reconnect with the alumni, I would love to do so. Those of you that are able to go, what a great opportunity to reconnect with the, the rebellion that are going to be coming. So uh, you're all encouraged to go. A friendly-